undertake a project, you often wonder what material was the object made of, what colors it had, what kind of weathering would be appropriate, how some specific elements work together, etc. I've been lucky enough to have the real thing while working with a US Rangers project. This is an original US M1 helmet from World War II, which comes from a previous French owner. Let's have a look. You compare it with other helmets of this period, the first thing that you notice is that it's quite big and it has a very common round shape, but a distinctive pronounced upward protrusion. There are many post-war variants, both in the USA and European armies, but we know that this is the genuine thing from the war, thanks to this characteristic front rim seam, which sets it in 1943. The 1944 version would have that seam on the back rim. The reason why it's big is due to the fact that it has a double helmet composition. It has an outer shell and an inside hard hat or liner. The second thing you are going to notice is the exotic material used on the inside helmet. It was made with coconut fibers mixed with resins. These materials give it a curious stripe with the look. On a model reproduction, this effect can be rendered with light brown and chocolate brown. Inside, you can see the complex suspension webbing, an ape strap, and a leather sweatband. The left and right chin straps of this helmet are missing, but they had this very same olive green color. On this early version, right and left bales had a fixed position. Let's remove the liner and have a peek inside. The shell could be used as a spade, as a bucket, and even as a cooking pot, though heat could damage the metal alloy. The liner could be used without the shell, as a work hard hat, and it was used by instructors and the military police. Let's put it back. Have a look at the leather chim strap. It was usually worn unfastened or on top of the front rim. Notice that the buckle doesn't have a metallic shine. It's just flat black. If you have a look at the shell, you will see that the paint quality after more than 70 years is excellent. There's wear and tear on the seam, but you can hardly see rust. This is shiny metal. So, taking this fact into account, I wouldn't use rust or excessive buttering on a USM1 World War II helmet model, unless you're depicting a specific badly damaged helmet. As you can see, its color is a simple dark green, which can be weathered to it with a brown filter or brown wash on tiny iron chipping on the apex and around the rim. Well, I hope this short analysis of this original helmet has been helpful for you. The M1 is a paradigmatic helmet of World War II and watching the actual thing from a close perspective may change some preconceived ideas. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.